Live is Jim Seamus. And Andrew Matheson for this week's edition of Double Coverage, our week two. Get them up. I had them up. You got them up again. We're excited. Week two preview uh, for all the, the Santa Cruz County football games. And the biggest one we're going to start with between two county teams, the Black and Blue Bowl. Yeah. It's been a lot of blue in yeah. recent years, not so much black. Aptos has won this game. Aptos and Watsonville, by the way. Aptos has won this game three years in a row, 10 of the last 11 meetings, and 26 victories overall since it started in 1969. That's all history. It's all history. I want to know about the future. The future. I, the future, Aptos runs a fast offense, <laughs> and uh, Watsonville's come off their first yeah, win. We have, we have a pretty good uh, idea about the future, I think. Uh, I'm not even going to... I don't, almost, I don't even have to ask who's going to win this game. But is it going to be a good game? <laughs> um, that, 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 yeah, I mean, yeah. I think we both like Aptos, obviously, correct? We do. Okay, we, do. we both like Aptos. We got that out of the way. Is it going to be a good game? Yeah. I mean, I think so. I mean, I feel like Watsonville showed a lot more last week. They did. Than they did in week one, which is a huge, a huge victory for them and going, moving but forward. But Aptos showed a lot more last week than I expected. That know? is also true. And, and Seaside may have gone through a quarterback change or whatnot that – was pretty drastic, but I mean, Aptos came back and played some football. Yeah, the way they know how. So I like the Mariners. I mean, it seems like they're running on all cylinders early on now. Yeah, and uh, but Watsonville looked like they gained some momentum last week, and hopefully they could make a game of this. And Watsonville, of course, you know, spent a lot of time in the offseason kind of getting uh, gearing around that defense. It's going to be tested this weekend on Friday night uh, at Watsonville High. We both like the Mariners. Brandon Boyd, Brandon Boyd, Brandon Boyd. Gilroy, Gilroy, Gilroy. He is the name that we're all kind of eager to see. Gilroy visiting Monta Vista Christian on Friday night at 7.30 p.m. We're two um, games into the schedule, and he already has 575 yards or so rushing. And seven touchdowns on 58 of carries. He's yeah. exceeded last year's total, but he is the man on a mission. He gets the bulk of the carries for that team. Yeah. He's a number and a name that you'll hear called a lot over the PA system. And he's obviously the guy that MVC is going to try and stop on Friday night. Uh, David Reese says, obviously, if we can contain him, we can win, which is okay. easier said than done. Yeah. Um, but he also said kind of... Keeping him to sub three hundred yards might be like just kind of the, that's containing him. Basically, he's already had one game in which he ran for three hundred thirty three yards and five touchdowns, and they lost. So there is that yeah. <laughs> to to build up. Yeah, <laughs> the shootout against Live Oak. Yeah, and I expe- but, I kind of expect up. that this weekend. So on oh, which side? I mean, like. Well, I, I like MVC, but I expect kind of a high, a very high scoring game between these two teams. And it, I think it, well, Boyd is going to be up there, but I think MVC will have the edge. Late. You know what? Just a be the other side of that. I think I'll take Gilroy then. I, I mean, Monta Vista, do they have Deshaun Hopkins? I heard he's a little banged up. Deshaun Hopkins is going to be a game-time decision uh, with a leg injury. Uh, Justin Peterson, though, their returning senior lineman, is going to be 100% okay. in this game. And obviously they'll have Dominic Robles carrying it for him. But I'm just, I, I don't know uh, in terms of which team has more depth, but I just know that it's seemingly Gilroy got beat up last year in a power division, went 2-8. and eight, But I think they've bounced back nicely, so I like the Mustangs. Okay. The Gilroy Mustangs. The Gilroy Mustangs. Okay. I'll take MVC. It's going to be their homecoming night, which usually provides a little more distractions, yeah. but sometimes some excitement. Yeah. Um, but also, three points last week for, uh, for MVC. That was their lowest output since 2009 when they were shut out against St. Francis. I expect them to bounce back this week. Third game on the slate, Leland visiting SoCal High, 7.30 p.m. on Friday night. SoCal hasn't started the 2-0 right now. They haven't started 3-0 since 2006. Of course, that year they went 3-0, and and then they lost seven in a row to finish 3-7. and oh. So hopefully that's not the same omen for uh, for the Knights. But big A-League school coming down to uh, to SoCal and coming off a loss to Midi, in which they lost 35-14. You bet your A. Um, I think Leland's pretty darn good. I do, too. I mean, they played Midi tough last week. And uh, after routing Saint San Jose High, and San Jose is not a, a great program, but no, they're having a down year, obviously. You know, but. so but I think I think Leland has a big O line, mm-hmm. and they they always do. Yeah, and uh, I'm looking for big things at a quarterback. Matt McLaughlin, uh, you know, he passed for 1,600 yards last year along with 18 touchdowns. Yeah, the, I mean, first year coach Jake Shaughnessy. That's usually not a good thing early in the season. Kind of guys are lear- learning curves, still might be a little mm-hmm. high. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they kind of held their own a little bit with Mitty, it seemed like. And, uh, yeah, you mentioned McLaughlin. You mentioned kind of the lineman, Eric Bochamp, uh, Connor Anderson, Ty Kim, who was the returning, who was a sophomore of the year last year in the uh, Mount Hamilton division with where Leland plays. Um, but, yeah, it should be it should be an interesting game. I know, Coach I- Ron Myers, I mean, usually we always know Leland for their wing tee. Coach Ron Myers says they're actually running a little more pistol, which of course is where you see that those sixteen hundred yards and eighteen touchdowns probably from McLaughlin last mm-hmm. year. So um, 
I think this is going to be the game where SoCal. I think this is their. This is a biggest, telltale game. This is their biggest test so far. Yeah, it's going to tell a lot more. Yeah, I mean, let's just see if that big trio for SoCal Moreno, Daniel Fisher, Ryan Canavan, and Isaac Moreno can step up and make the plays. Leland, I do have Leland. Leland, sorry, SoCal. And our final game on Friday night, Pajaro Valley, coming off a big win last week over Harbor, is going down south to Gonzalez. Yo, Grizz, I still love you. <laughs> Uh, of course, now PV coming off a win, like I mentioned, snapping yeah. an eight-game losing streak. The previous win, of course, was last season against Gonzalez. All right. Well, I'm thinking things. I'm going to give Paro Valley the kiss of death and choose them this week. Oof. And that's – we don't even know if Cantrell is going to play this, this. You know, if Anthony Cantrell is kicked out of last week's game, if he's going to be even – eligible to play, I, I think they're going to... Tell me about the situation there. Well, he was ejected for, uh, I believe, a late hit on mm-hmm. uh, the defense of this player. He's ejected from that. and You have to so, sit out one game, right? I mean... We don't know that necessarily the rules, but that is obviously one of the options, I believe. Um, I feel, even with that said, and we, shot, we saw it in the second half against mm-hmm. Harbor... That they have other players. They have other players. Yeah. They have other backs. John Mason, Eddie Medina, yeah. Art Aguilar, um, Miguel Esparza... Um, the kid I'm missing, J.J. Caceres, they all kind of stepped up uh-huh. and showed that, you know, PV's not a one-back team, which I mentioned last week. Cool. Um, and I think that's going to be the case again against Gonzalez. You're again. taking PV too? I'm taking PV. The double kiss of death. <laughs> we like you, PV. That does it for our Friday preview of week two. If you're looking for a, if you're Scott's Valley, if you're St. Francis, if you're Cabrillo, check out Saturday's edition where we check the uh, Saturday's preview edition where we preview all those games. Um, we have a new app, by the way. It's the same app. Well, it's the same app, but now it's available on the iOS, the Apple Store, if you have an iPhone like we both Big do. Big time! I know. We, we're, we finally got approved. They we finally... haven't let it get to our heads. No. <laughs> oh, we're so big time. <laughs> And uh, it's got push notifications, so if you, you can sign up for push notifications, it will it will forward you the uh, final scores when they come out uh, on Friday night. If you're if you're that into prep football, which we know you are, we are. Yeah, we are. So uh, check out that. That's available on the App Store uh, through the iOS. It's also available on Google Play. Um, you can check us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Tout. And online at SantaCruzSentinel.com backslash football. 